Hey guys, Gamerzak here, and welcome to my top 10 PC role-playing games to watch in 2017. Now, RPGs come in all shapes and sizes, from CRPGs to ARPGs to JRPGs to Western RPGs, but they all show us new worlds to be a part of and the lives of fascinating characters. Well, it's time you learn the lore and make some choices in these upcoming RPGs. First up, we've got Battle Chasers Night War by Airship Syndicate. Classic combat in a tech-infused fantasy world. Use skills and strategy to survive in a lush and brutal landscape. There's crafting, deep dungeon diving, and JRPG-style turn-based combat. The art style is very pretty, with unique animated cinematics which really sets it apart from the competition. Funded on Kickstarter raising over 850,000 US dollars, then being fully funded by THQ Nordic, it looks like this is going to be a good one. Next we have South Park The Fractured But Whole by Ubisoft San Francisco. The new South Park game, delayed into 2017, we've been watching this one for a while now. Ditching the fantasy approach and instead going superhero, this should be a whole new flavor for the game. I think many were surprised at how good the original game was, but this time Obsidian Entertainment aren't involved. We'll have to wait and see if the sequel can live up to the original, despite that fact. Then we've got Pyre by Supergiant Games. From the creators of Bastion and Transistor, that alone should tell you a lot about Pyre. In this party-based RPG, you lead a band of exiles to freedom through a competition. Interestingly, combat is said to be a mix of Rocket League, Dota, and previous Supergiant games, where it's half combat, half sport, launching a glowing orb into the opponent's pyre to cause damage. It looks gorgeous, there's unique characters, and we can expect another soundtrack that people will adore. Next up we've got The Surge by Deck 13 Interactive. Sci-Fi Dark Souls, that's really the best description. You control a single character in deliberate combat that relies heavily on your stamina. Run out of stamina and you won't be able to finish your combo or dodge away. One cool thing is that you can target specific body parts to disable enemies and severed parts can be looted for new schematics, allowing the crafting of new items. There's even a soul collection system with tech scrap and it's been stated that bosses can be defeated in multiple ways. Looks great, but being compared to Dark Souls is tricky. Hopefully it does enough to set itself apart and be a unique experience. And then we have Vampire by Don't Nod Entertainment. It's about vampires. From the creators of Life is Strange, the developers are going in a bit of an action RPG direction this time. You play a vampire doctor whose thirst for blood compels the murder of innocent people. The big theme here is you get to choose your targets. Study them, stalk them, then strike with a myriad of abilities and weapons in a city of mutated vampires and vampire hunters. Apparently it's possible to do a peaceful run of the game and not kill anyone, maintaining your doctor cover, but prevents you from leveling up. It looks great, and we can expect the creators of Life is Strange to make a compelling and original story with an old trope. Then we've got Mass Effect Andromeda by Bioware. It's the new Mass Effect, taking place 600 years after the events of the first three Mass Effect games. Here we have a new storyline, new galaxy, and you play either Sarah or Scott Ryder, a pathfinder tasked with securing the future of your species. It's also the first game in the series to have an open world environment, explore planets, make choices, have romantic relationships, and there's also cooperative multiplayer. Overall, it seems very Mass Effect. But with all the changes and a new story arc, it might not be to every veteran of the series' tastes. I doubt they'll stray too far from the originals, though. Next we have Scalebound by Platinum Games. How to train your dragon, kind of. You play Drew, a headphone-wearing loner who's pulled into the strange and beautiful world of Draconis. Bonding with a dragon, you work together, leveling up and learning new skills along the way, and if one dies, so does the other, Dragonheart style. Fight with weapons, become a half-dragon hybrid, and learn how to ride your dragon as you fight enormous monsters and powerful enemies that threaten Draconis and Earth. Honestly, it looks epic and multiplayer co-op seems exciting, as long as you're very much into the action side of RPGs. 
Then we've got Near Automata by Platinum Games, a sequel few were expecting. The original Near launched to middling reviews and isn't considered a success, though as the years passed, love for the game grew and it developed a cult following. Bringing on Platinum Games to boost the action, some worried it would affect the rest of the game negatively, specifically noting that the director and composer are the same as before and the fact that it's Square Enix, it should still thoroughly be an RPG. It looks beautiful and the music sounds phenomenally unique. It's always nice when potential is seen in something that didn't necessarily make a lot of money and it's given another shot. Next up we have Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord by Tail Worlds Entertainment. Medieval combat simulator and RPG, a game people have been waiting years for with a when it's ready release schedule. Set 200 years before Warband, engage in sieges, diplomacy, economics, and even establish secret criminal empires in your quest for power. Full mod support is also a thing, with the engine and development tools being made available. Although there have been mentions of a 2017 release, you never know with this one. At least there's a Steam page for it now. Finally, we've got Kingdom Come Deliverance by Warhorse Studios, a massive realistic medieval game. Set in 1403 Bohemia, the king has died, and your character suffers in the struggle for power. Realism is the focus here from the landscape to historically accurate combat. All the usual RPG stuff is here too, choices, quests, character development, and notably boasting realistic and responsive AI for NPCs. Another title with a huge budget that's been in development for a while, this one is actually saying it'll release in 2017 after going through the alpha and beta phases we've been playing so far, along with a delay. Will the final game be able to live up to all the hype though? We'll have to wait and see. Also, as a set of bonus games for this list, there are a couple of classic RPGs which have been in early access so playable for a while now, but they are completing in 2017, so that's Torment Tides of Numenera and Divinity Original Sin 2. Inexile is also quite busy, as after Torment is completed, there's the Bard's Tale 4, which I would expect a 2018 release because they have Wasteland 3, which should be coming along in 2019 onwards. I mean, these games could come out a little bit earlier, but I would doubt it. And of course, Cyberpunk 2077, which was teased years ago, but apparently it's now a focus after the Blood and Wine expansion for The Witcher 3. But I really don't expect that to be coming out this year. And of course, I do have to mention the new Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's something I'm very excited for, but most likely not coming to PC. It'll probably be a PlayStation exclusive. But overall, that's six bonus games for you guys to be excited about. Now, most of these games should be releasing in 2017, but either way, you should keep an eye on developments to see if these games will play their parts perfectly or simply forget their lines. And to wrap up, here's something I'd like to know. What kind of RPGs do you like best? Classic, action, Japanese, or Western? Personally, I probably enjoy classic and Japanese RPGs the most because that's what I grew up with. Alright, that wraps up my top 10 PC role-playing games to watch in 2017. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, drop me a like or share it with your friends. The support is always appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.